What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we are here to talk about this San Francisco 49ers offense versus the Detroit Lions defense this Sunday for opening week because the Lions they have a big challenge in front of them. So let's get it started. Hey up, we're going to bite a kneecap off and we're going to stand up and then it's going to take two more shots to knock us down. And on the way up, we're going to take your other kneecap and we're going to get up and then it's going to take three shots to get us down. And when we do, we're going to take another hunk out of you before before long, where they're going to be the last one standing. Welcome everybody to the video. Glad you guys are here. And I'm excited to dive into this because the Lions have a very, very big challenge this Sunday. And that's stopping this San Francisco 49ers offense. Not many teams have been able to do it. It's been a struggle. However, week one has also been a struggle for the San Francisco 49ers in the past. They've came out slow. And that's probably because of some of the offensive things that they like to do. But in today's video, we're going to dive into that a little bit deeper. You know, some details, maybe some statistics. I need to be prepared for in this game. We've heard all the quotes like eye candy. We're going to take a look at what that actually means in this game and maybe some things that the Lions could throw out there to try to slow down this offense. I don't know exactly what the 49ers are going to throw at this team because it is the first game of a new season. So I'm sure there's going to be wrinkles. There's going to be little things in this offense. But what we do know with Kyle Shanahan is that he's led this offense for multiple years now. The offense is going to be like it's always been. It's going to be a run-based team. Even Aubrey Pleasant, who worked with Kyle Shanahan, had said that as well. We know what they're going to be about. We know the type of running style they're going to have. And then it's just about trying to stop them because not many teams have had success doing that. Now, before we get into maybe more of the on-field action, let's take a look at this depth chart for the San Francisco 49ers and who's rolling out in this game. So I'm going to throw that on the screen right now. You see the quarterback position, Jimmy Garoppolo. He's back. He's healthy. There is that battle between him and Trey Lance. And actually, I'm going to call that the X factor, but we'll get into it. Trey Lance. We'll get into that. But Jimmy Garoppolo, he's back. He's healthy. Jimmy Garoppolo honestly doesn't really scare me from watching, but he does what this offense needs to do to click he's been in this offense for multiple years so Jimmy Garoppolo being back he only technically played in six games last season even though some of them he didn't finish he was only three and three through that time and his stats weren't that great either but like I said he didn't play through all of the games at the running back spot this is usually where San Francisco is pretty strong and you can see they, they kind of are again Raheem Mostert is a game changer I think Raheem Mostert is one of the most dangerous players on this team if not the most dangerous player on this team he's had to deal with injuries but when he's out there he's electric he's got fantastic victories vision. He's tough. I mean, he's hard to bring down. He's low to the ground. He's a pass catcher. He brings so much to the table and it makes him tough. And behind that, they got young running backs, but they have talent here. Trey Sermon coming out of the draft this year from Ohio State, Jamichael Hasty, and of course, Elijah Mitchell. I like Elijah Mitchell coming out of this year's draft. The running back room, young, but talented. At receiver, you see Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, Mohamed Sanu. Two of the main guys, of course, Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk have been getting a lot of attention. And that's because they do play as an extension of this run game. The receivers are like they're part of the run game. They make so many plays behind the line of scrimmage and they lead block and break for huge plays. And they're just guys you always have to pay attention to when they're on the field, whether they're getting the ball or they're not getting it, which makes them so tough. They may not be the best receivers, but they're really tough after they have the ball in their hands, like running backs. Then you look at the tight end position, of course, George Kittle. Tight ends are huge in this offense. Like the running back position, Kittle is probably the other most dangerous weapon on this offense. Kittle, we know how fantastic he is, but it's because he brings so much. Kittle's not just a pass catching tight end or, or a blocking tight end because he does both and he's so talented that after he catches the football the guy ran a 4 5 40 he is as athletic as they come you could put him one-on-one -on -one with the safety and he can make a miss in space he demands attention it's tough to match up with him one-on-one -on -one. so maybe the most impressive part is how well he does that combined with how well he'll block and lead the way so when the ball's in his hands he's dangerous and Kyle Huszczyk a guy that can get very overlooked but should not because he's another huge part of this offense whether that's getting the football lead blocking being a distraction or catching the football he's kind of like a tight end they can line this guy out like a tight end if they want to as a receiver same thing with Kittle by the way so they have a lot of weapons and then finally their offensive line Trip Williams, Lakin Thomas, Alex Max, Daniel Brunskill, Mike McGlinchey when you look at that offensive line it looks solid. Lakin Thomas and of course the former line what you need to know is that this is an athletic offensive line. They're built for this zone rushing scheme that San Francisco has in implemented for years. And it's fit really well with Lake Thomas. And they have a lot of really good run blockers. Alex Mack is a new addition to this. All of them are really good run blockers. They're athletic. They can get to the second level. 
However, where some of them struggle is in pass protection. Now, Trent Williams last season, he did his thing. But we know what Trent Williams is about in the Lions. We'll see if we can get after him. But it's guys like Lakin Tomlinson, Brunskill, where I don't feel super confident in their pass protection abilities if you can get them into passing downs, which we'll get into, but that's kind of the key. And also McGlinchey, he's not that great of a pass protector either. So if the Lions can get this offense into obvious passing downs, they're going to have opportunities to get after the quarterback with a four-man rush. And I definitely think they can. I think they can win those battles. You're talking about Trey against a guy like McGlinchey. I think Trey can eat there. I mean, there's so many of our guys that I think can win these matchups, but it's about getting him in that situation first, which is the struggle. Let's talk about this Kyle Shanahan offensive scheme first. And I really want to focus on this run game because it really does all start with the run game. Everybody knows it. It's no surprise. It's not like we're going to head in there and be shocked that it's all about stopping the run because we all know that. It's just, can you stop the run? That's the big question. Now, Kyle Shanahan has been doing this for years, going back to 2012. And it's actually kind of interesting. It originated, you know, back in the 90s. Mike Shanahan was part of this the offensive line coach implementing this zone blocking scheme and it's funny because a lot of this actually had to do with Dom Capers we know defensively he was a big part of the zone blitz and he would do things like we see now you know you blitz a linebacker and you drop a defensive lineman in the coverage things the Lions had been working on but what other teams do as well Capers now working with us which I think it was interesting but a way to kind of combat that was this zone rushing style instead of it as it always used to be man versus man now you block an area right? So you're blocking an area. If you miss somebody, you just keep moving on to the next spot. And they found a nice little mix of this because they've been able to stretch the field, but they've also shown the adjustments to attack based on how the defense is trying to stop them. And we've seen teams like the Green Bay Packers go out there and play their linebackers seven yards off the line of scrimmage and spread out like crazy. And they still got gashed. We saw this a lot more in 2019 than 2018 here in the NFC Championship game. The Packers came in planning to stop this wide zone rushing attack. So in response, the San Francisco 49ers did a lot of this trap gap rushing to just adjust on the fly. So even though they were known as this wide zone rushing team, they took a different approach based on how the Packers were defending them. One, they have come out slow in the past, probably because there is a lot to learn. So hopefully that leans for a benefit for us. Goals and a little changes that he's made to his offense over the years based on, you know, what other teams know about him and how they want to approach them and try to stop their offense. It's what's made them so successful. He's had a lot of success everywhere, adjusting the different quarterbacks, things like that. But for example, 2018 to 2019, he started mixing in more of the gap rushing scheme, more of the, the traps, you know, just different things like that to continue to evolve and not just sit in his offense based on what the defense would show him. So having that mix is what made it very tough. But at its foundation, it's a zone rushing scheme. Now, I know there's a lot of similarities that will get thrown here with, you know, the LA Rams because there's a connection. The LA Rams, they had the zone rushing scheme. They did the play action, the play action bootleg, just like Kyle Shanahan. But there were some differences, mainly with uh, the LA Rams. A lot of their rushing was his own rushing, mid zone rushing uh, style with Todd Gurley. So it was more the offensive tackle instead of reaching out to block and you know blocking his zone he would hop off and he would take off the edge that way they could get a quicker gap to the inside so they were more of a mid-zone rushing team in comparison to the San Francisco 49ers. You also see the 49ers do more 21 personnel and a lot more split back looks than the LA Rams who did a lot more of the 11 personnel, you know, the one tight end, one running back in the backfield, just because the personnel they had. The benefit the Lions will have in terms of preparation is that number one, they run a zone rushing scheme. While it may not be identical to what, you know, the 49ers are going to do, there may be more inside, more outside, we'll have to wait and see, but they have a zone blocking scheme in general. So that's gonna be something that they're easily going to replicate and they've been doing it in practice for a while now. Plus, Plus, the Packers zone rushing scheme, the Vikings zone rushing scheme. So you got to be prepared for this anyways. And Jared Goff was a part of that Rams offense. They, even though it didn't do the same things exactly, they did do his own rushing attack. And they also had a lot of pre-snap movement right up there with the San Francisco 49ers motions. So they're going to throw as many looks as they possibly can at this defense in practice to get them prepared for this. And that's something that Goff has done, has been a part of a lot of those motions. So they should be prepared. We see that, like, because they're going to be doing it in practice the entire offseason is going against this. Has his own little wrinkles and that's where things get tough because for the Niners every way they motion they can all take the ball in the backfield and make somebody miss from their receivers to their fullback to their tight end you could give it to anybody back there they'll do split back concepts out of the shotgun where you have to respect both of them they'll have motions lead the way their motions are what makes it tough so we'll get into the pass game has kind of become an extension of this and that's why they have so many moving pieces you know you have these fly motions that are just flying all over the field they Dan Campbell cut them eye candy but people have been calling it eye candy for a long time because that's what it is but you also have to pay attention because they'll give it to those guys and that's what makes it tough you know 15 plays in a row they won't have to but then as soon as they do you can be out of spots assuming you don't have to look over there and then you're in a bad position defensively it's a really it's a complex offense but at the same time it's really tough to stop linebackers it's a really tough ask but it's kind of what you're asking of the running back just 
backwards. So for the linebacker position, they need to be extremely patient with their decision making and their feet and their eyes and deciding where to attack. But as soon as they decide where to attack, where the hole is, where the running back is, they have to be able to go zero to zero to 60, zero to 100, whichever one you use. They got to get there. I don't care. We're talking kilometers, miles per hour. They got to get to the backfield super fast. There can't be any hesitation, but at the same time, they can't just be filling gaps because it's their gap. They need to be patient to see where the running back is going. So you have to be a little bit of both. It's the same thing you ask of your running back in a zone blocking scheme is to stay patient. But as soon as you see that, just like Mostert, you got to get zero to 100. This ties with the defensive line because while statistics they may not always have as much of the stats advantages can be power with a defensive line because these offensive lines are usually a little bit lighter but they're also very athletic they get to the second level well so for these linemen about in zone rush defense so for the defensive linemen the more havoc that they can create in the backfield these offensive linemen trying to pick them up and demand double team blocks the more that they can do that the longer it takes for these offensive linemen to get to the second level for the linebacker inside zone plays the offensive line they're gonna be moving hip to hip until one can break off and get to the second level they're trying to pick up these linebackers so the more havoc that a defensive lineman can create getting to the backfield the longer it's going to take the offensive lineman to get to the second level which is going to get more time for the linebackers to have a clear hole to come through but these linebackers the outside linebackers you got a pressure that's going to be on these guys snap after snap because they can't get fooled on the eye candy they can't get sucked into a play they have to stay patient set the edge but then not even just that they also have to make plays they have to get off of blocks there's going to be lead blockers out there they have to continue to force things back into the middle of the field this is an awesome example watch the top outside linebacker they're showing a five-man front here in a base set you're seeing the motion which is automatically going to be a lead blocker for the secondary but they're leaning towards the strong side of the field here with their defensive line but this top outside linebacker forces this play back inside if he doesn't do that he's got so much room it's not like he's just hopping outside and standing there he's actually Actually making this play getting low and making the tackle this is where we could have an advantage with flowers and Romeo on the outside to win these against these pulling offensive linemen as many big plays as this offense can put together with this run game they also have a lot of negative plays when you watch them against even teams they beat and this is a great example of how that can happen it starts on the defensive line at the defensive end position watch how the great push forces Kyle Juszczyk to go help out to open that space. And then you have a one-on-one -on -one on the outside with a tight end and outside linebacker. And I think we can win that battle. And now all of a sudden, everything's going backwards. I think that's an opportunity for us right there. If we can get that penetration first, but then also our outside linebacker is disciplined, setting the edge, then he can blow up plays in the backfield, get them behind the chains, and now they're passing. I love this play by the outside linebacker. I mean, the Rams were able to practice all week against their offense, so they knew what they were prepared for. And they did a good job against the run. They lost because a couple of penalties and they got behind early and, you know, they gave up some short passes. But, I mean, this play is just blown up. The aggressiveness gets downhill and then making the tackle. Then you need a defensive back there to support you to stop him in his tracks so that he can make this tackle. I saw multiple big plays given up like this. So you get the motion from one side to another. Now, the linebackers don't shift. There's probably man coverage on the top. But when I see a play like this, I think there needs to be a shift by the linebackers here because now this is... Very much so the strong side of the field. You have the tight end, and now you have a receiver to lead block. No one's able to even touch him because the linebackers don't move. This is a late motion, and you can see the defense already adjusting to Kyle Huszczyk. But when he motions back to the left side of the field, the entire linebacker unit moves in sync. They pass off the responsibility. But because of that, the inside, the middle linebacker in this case, he puts himself in a spot where he's able to get over there and meet the running back to make a play. A great quote about this offense, because a lot of these games can come down to this. This offense is sort of boom or bust. And you wouldn't think that with a rushing team. Like, what? Boom or bust? But yes, this outside zone rushing scheme, when you're doing this, it has potential to go wrong. And if you're really disciplined defensively, if you're getting that penetration in the backfield, you can blow plays up, get teams into passing downs like the Niners, and they're not super comfortable doing that. And all of a sudden, we're in a great spot. But it can also be a boom where it takes one snap and you can have it, you know, you can be making plays all day and then one carry all of a sudden breaks for 80 yards, one guy's out of his spot, one guy's not locked in, and you have a huge play and it flips the game. Because once they get on top, they're built to play with the lead. Like the Packers, pass rushers. They have so many good pass rushers. So if you can stay in it where you're on top first, forcing them to pass, then you can run the football, the pass rushers slow down. That's how you beat this team. 
but they're built to play with the lead. And then that's just a ripple effect to the inside. Linebackers need to come down to make a play. They have to avoid blockers. And the secondary needs to slide down to help. But the outside linebackers, for a lot of different reasons, you're going to get play actions that come out late to your side of the field. And you may not even expect it. And by the time you're gone, they're going to throw it that way. Pretty much any team that does these zone rushing plays has this play. You know, you got your naked keeper with the slide run underneath, naked because there's no one out there to protect him. But you see the defense, they have man coverage on this receiver that started on the right side and went underneath the play. So he's trying to work his way across the field. Meanwhile, you have an outside linebacker who's trying to, of course, have run contain on the backside where, you know, they're taught, I guess, not to cross the center, four yards of depth. But then you also have a defensive back over there. To me, this is all about communication. We have to be on top of communication on where these things are, just being alert. 21 is likely lined up with the running back on this play, but I think this is where you just have to have that communication to understand that you may have to pass this off that responsibility. Do things late pre-snap where you don't even have that much time to react or they'll also do things early just to move your positions to get you out of spots to expect one thing and sometimes they'll just do it to have lead blockers and that's where the secondary becomes extremely important because they have to win these one-on-ones your tight end versus an outside linebacker you got to get off that block and make a play your cornerbacks versus receivers you have to win that matchup if you're losing these matchups on the outside big play spark like that because Raheem Mostert he only needs this much space and he's gone these inside linebackers have to be extremely disciplined cannot get out of spots because one once you do that, it helps the offensive lineman to push you out of the play. And also, they got to avoid offensive linemen, specifically on these wide outside plays. Look, this offense is all about doing things quick. So sometimes they'll do these mid-zone runs, and instead of handing it off, they'll toss it. The reason they do that is to get it to the running back quicker. That way, it's just faster. I mean, those are like the little things that are all throughout there, which you wouldn't even expect, but they just do it just to make it quicker. A lot of times, the 5 two, six, one is what teams will go to. A lot of times, those base sets because you're able to get a free linebacker because everybody's occupied in the offense line so he's free to roam and pick the holes and then it's just about picking the right hole to me a lot of this is set up by the outside linebacker again on the top of the screen here because he peeks his head out to take away george kittle on this motion whether that's a pass or a run block whatever it may be it occupies Kittle, so it allows the linebacker to slide down and pick the hole. That takes you to the si to the secondary. The secondary is going to be important in this game for a few reasons. First off, I look at that safety position. Especially if you're going to put an extra defensive player in the box, you're going to play a lot of single high coverage, which I think the Lions could in this game, sliding one down into the box consistently. This play of the game, I think we'll see this a lot from the Lions. So they're showing a six-man front. It's basically seven on seven right now with the inside linebacker. But you see the safety slide in to give you kind of like an extra linebacker with one deep. And again, it's about this off outside linebacker. You see the inside linebacker is getting picked up by Kittle, but he's able to slide off and make this tackle. If not, that's a lot of space. They're going to have some options in terms of personnel, and I'm sure they're going through that this week to decide what works best. If they roll out with Romeo and Trace, their outside linebackers in their base defense, I think they'll be fine. Even though they may not be athletes, it's like a Derek Barnes would be at that spot. I think they'll be fine. They'll have the advantage of strength. I get out of position, you know, not bite on the eye candy, then they'll be fine. I just wonder about the inside linebacker position. Will the Lions, you know, rock with the Jimmy Collins? I would bet that they will, but they could mix in guys like Derek Barnes. I mean, we've seen some five three looks from certain teams as well where they'll put three linebackers inside between the tackles so having some maybe Derek Barnes in there possibly to shoot down fill these gaps really quickly because if he can read the run fast and get zero to 100 that'll give you a lot more speed on the field than maybe a guy like Collins would give you an idea where you could push a guy like Trey on the defensive line right and you could put him out there with a Brockers or a Levi or whatever you want to do and put a guy like Jamie an outside linebacker you know maybe that gives you even more speed so I'm curious to see what they do there but it wouldn't shock me of Derek Barnes because it's a big part of this game plan just to match up with some of the speed because his closing speed is there and if you watch in preseason there was absolutely zero hesitation when he made a decision usually he was right to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video bet QL look football is back everybody football is back and I know some of you guys need some help with it because I, I need some help as well and bet QL is here to help you when did you start guessing on your bets I just been guessing. <laughs> and who were your picks for week one? Uh, Pat's, Pat's minus three over the Dolphins and Bills over the Steelers minus six and a half. So I'm sure you're confused what the heck is going on here. Let's go back a little bit to kind of set the stage. Patriots and Dolphins. I kind of like the Patriots logo. I feel like that's underrated. Patriots all the way. Don't be this guy. Download BetQL to make smart bets. BetQL's best bet computer scans 350,000 unique bets per year to give you recommendations on all games, on all major sports. Take the Saints. Michael Thomas, he's going to carry that team. He's going to kill it. I'm, trust me. Trust me on this one. Bro, Thomas ain't playing week one. 
Get up to date injury and lineup changes that way things like this don't happen. I just put the money on them because of him. Solely because of him. Allegra, who should I take? Oh, it's Alexa. Alexa! Alexa! It's not plugged in. It covers spreads, over-unders, prop player bets, and all the tools that you need to do your own research. Plus, you can see who the pros are backing. Keep up with real-time line movement with your bets. Background knowledge on team summaries, how they've done against the spread. You can look at scenarios, home away on grass. Head to try.betql.co slash dose of Dion to get started. Use promo code DOD for 25% off. I felt hopeless. So hopeless. Now download BetQL. Wait, wait. Down. <clears throat> these safeties have to be on it. They have to be very helpful. A lot of times to me on these cutback lanes, cutbacks on his own plays because his own rushing play, they open cutback lanes. Everybody's flowing one way and all of a sudden they can cut back, especially when you got a guy like Mostert who's got like 4-3 speed and he can get to 0-200 just like that and break a play extremely fast. You have to have that backside help from that safety position. They have to be willing to get down there and make plays against the run. And then on the outside as well, cornerbacks. Cornerbacks have to do a good job of avoiding and getting off of blocks. They're going to throw a lot of screens their way. They're going to have lead blockers coming where. So they got to play physical. You know, they can't get blocked out of the play. They got to play physical. And I like our cornerbacks for that. So I at least like the, the play style we have out of Okuda, Amani, AJ Parker. Like we have guys that will be physical, but they need to play like that on the outside. They have to be willing to go down, help and make a tackle. And same thing from the safety position. I think this is where Will Harris will actually shine. He looks like an X factor to me defensively because at that safety spot, he likes to hit. He likes to get in the box. Aubrey Pleasant was with the Rams working with the cornerbacks, not the safeties. But I look at a play like this. They have one linebacker here. Now, they're going to be playing a split safety look in the back, and which the Lions probably will as well. But you're going to see them both shoot down. But this is where I put the emphasis on our guys like Will and Tracy to take these cutback lanes. They do that quick pitch mid-zone play, but see how he doesn't take the cutback? He jumps where the running back is, and all of a sudden that leaves a huge gap. Motion or not, the eye candy is crazy. This is a misdirection with Kyle Huszczyk here, but they pull the guard. See, both linebackers inside are following the fullback, and that gets them out of spots. Why do they get picked up with a block? But when you watch the guard, he pulls, like Rad says, the pulling offensive line will take you to the ball, and that's what happens here. And then just look at Moster. What the heck? You can see Walker in these situations as well. It will depend on what matchups are. For example, if you have Will Harris or Tracy Walker potentially in man coverage against a Kittle, they may be a little late, but as soon as you recognize the run, you got to get down and help. I mean, that's just the facts. You got to help this defense. But I don't know. The Lions could go with Will Harris over Tracy Walker in coverage. I know he was struggling a little bit back in practice. He gave that touchdown in the end zone. They might go with Will in coverage, but if they go with Walker in coverage, they look for Will Harris to help against the run. However, the thing is, you're going to get matchups where he lines out like a receiver. Last year, they did it with uh, Jordan Reed and Kittle. This year, they don't have Reed. They have Sweller, so it could be him as well. But that's where I would keep an eye on a guy like Ify possibly getting some snaps. Like, since we draft down as a potential player that could help us in some of these situations, I don't know if the Lions are practicing that. I don't know if we'll see it. But it does sound like a possibly a possibility of an idea to put Ify in some of these spots. He's got the size. He knows how to play coverage. Giving him a tight end would be like giving him a receiver in coverage. And a lot of times you will get matchups with cornerbacks one-on-one. -on -one. Ify, to me, could be the guy that get those matchups. Look, you're young at cornerback. No matter who you throw out there, you're going to be young. But at least he gives you the size. Stopping this pass attack. I mean, the fact is you want to make Jimmy Garoppolo beat you. And I think the Miami Dolphins did an extremely good job. They blew this team out 43-17. to And we've seen that game's really fluctuate the Niners. They blow out teams that maybe you didn't expect and they can lose the teams that maybe you didn't expect to just because it's for them. It's a lot of big plays can decide games. Well, for Miami, they got up early. They scored in the early possessions. They were up 14-0 just like that. But also defensively, they were extremely disciplined at the outside linebacker position, setting the edge, getting off of blocks and helping. On this play, you have Kittle lined out like a receiver and he's just such an athlete. And he's tough to match up with. In this situation, the Rams are going to blitz, so this could be Jimmy Garoppolo's hot read. But you have, basically, you have a corner, a defensive back, about seven yards off of George Kittle on this plate. And then it's back to the running back. He's not very comfortable under pressure. And you're going to get pressure on this team if you can stop the run. That's why it all comes back to the run because their pass pro is not fantastic on the offensive line. And when he's under pressure, he looks lost. All right. He doesn't move in the pocket very well. He doesn't really step up in the pocket. He kind of panics. You can see him fiddling around with the football. He's spinning around in circles and he's inaccurate, very inaccurate when he feels the heat. And with also not having that scrambling ability. If you can get them in these passing downs, take away Kittle first and take away the running back because a lot of times his check down is right where he looks as soon as the first option's not there. You take away those two spots and you make him beat you with somebody else. It only takes a few of these plays to completely change the game. And here you go, an arrow route to Raheem Mostert. Isaiah Simmons gets his eyes in the backfield for a second and he's gone. 
Now, if Kittle's blocking, a lot of times he loves to attack the middle. Hughes check is just fantastic. He can run block, he can take the football and run, and he can run routes and catch the football. He's tough. So he's another one of those guys that you have to stay locked into. You have to know your role. You can't say, hey, I got the fullback and then dive on a play action and jump on the running back and get behind because he will attack there. Those are the three guys that I'm focused on with this offense in the run game, but also in the pass game. Their pass game is off of the run game. It's just like the run game. It's about staying disciplined. It stinks to the outside. This kind of thing is tough. Watch George Kittle here, and he sells this really well, and the linebackers bite down like it's a run place. He always sells like he's blocking, then he just leaks out, and no one accounts for the tight end. It's passes to the receivers, the tight ends behind the line of scrimmage, running backs. It looks like that. You'll get screens. Here you get a running back screen off the play action. Defensive lineman, the defensive tackle on the top does a fantastic job of recognizing this, but a linebacker sticks with the running back. The defensive lineman takes it away, and it's an incomplete pass. A lot of it is about these linebackers being in the right spot, being disciplined, and taking away their job, and not getting sucked in and following the eye candy because if you can do that a lot of their pass game is off of that beating you downfield is not something that you see a ton intended pass yards for the last two years have been near the bottom of the nfl last year it was 90th at 6.3 right there with jared goff but jared goff's offense was kind of like that because the year before goff's intended air yards was way up jimmy garoppolo's it was not the year before it was basically the same thing that's just how their offense is structured so if he has to beat you down the field in third and six third and seven that's right where you want to be because the pressure is going to get there. He's going to get uncomfortable. It looks not good. Into obvious passing downs, I'd be telling my cornerbacks, safeties, whoever it is, but specifically my cornerbacks, don't be afraid to jump on a route because he's probably not going to have enough time to get through, you know, double moves. He doesn't have a lot of velocity on his passes towards the sideline across the field. So like those passes, they come in there kind of soft. A lot of times you see defensive backs jump on and force the completions. I wouldn't be afraid to tell him, hey man, jump on that, make a play. Pick that thing off because if we get extra possession, that's that's what we need in this game. But a lot of it is an extension of the run game outside getting things horizontally. And that's where you just have to count on those defensive backs, get off blocks and make plays, and also the linebackers to get out there and help. Motions are a staple of this offense. We know we can anticipate it. I can show you motions left and right all day long. But I think it's, you know, just communication, understanding where each other are and who everybody has. That communication line has to be open between the defenders being in the right spot and then i also think just staying disciplined those kind of couple things just stay with your keys stay with your roles because there's a great quote out there about this defense where it's even if you make the right decision but you're slow you're wrong you know so even if you hesitate for a second and you're like oh i got the right spot though you're still in the wrong spot because this offense is going to beat you quick. That's what makes it so tough. You have to pay attention to the motions because they can change your defense and they can change the strengths of the field. But at the same time, they also just have to understand what their responsibilities are. So it's going to be about communication, discipline, filling your role. And I'm going to be curious to see if they do anything differently, like putting a guy in Derek Barnes in the inside, if there's any adjustments defensively, if they stick with the Brockers, Nick Williams, and, you know, Lee McNeil that we expect to see if they make any changes there because they definitely could expect to see our base defense more than probably we'll ever see in one game that we will see in any other game this season so stay prepared for that that should be interesting and I'm assuming it's going to be that 3-4 look with the 50 front because you have two outside linebackers basically on the line of scrimmage I'm thinking it's going to be that way but we'll see maybe at halftime make some adjustments maybe they come out doing something different I don't know new coaching staff we'll see what their tendencies are like but I would point out a few things first off the cornerback position when I look at a guy like AJ Parker whoever's playing the slot look for cornerback blitzes in this game it's a chance where if you can get a wide zone call on those a cornerback blitz can get back there and he can force something back really quickly and all of a sudden you can blow up a play on those not always and sometimes it's not very effective but you can blow up plays and we saw it during the preseason the Lions would do it I've seen teams do it against the 49ers so I would look out for a few at least a few cornerback slot cornerback blitzes in this game trying to make some plays in the backfield and get them uncomfortable and yeah the Lions probably will blitz a little bit at least bringing five defenders and they may bring it on some early downs with the cornerback position things like that just to get downhill trying to break through and make some plays in the backfield but I would talk about on those passing downs it'll be interesting but if they can get into clear passing downs wouldn't be shocked if they brought five man rushes a lot but I think they'll be able to get there with four personally we'll see how it goes throughout the game we just got to get them in those situations so those are two things and also Trey Lance. Trey Lance to me becomes kind of an X factor in this one because he's good to go. He's going to be dressed. He's going to be on the sideline. And there's a big reason that Kyle Shanahan wanted him to be ready for that because we haven't seen this part before. Now, if he does come on the field, I don't expect to see him a ton. And it'll probably be a lot of the read option stuff. So you kind of know what's coming. But then the question is, again, can you stop it? This is just preseason. So it's probably a little different. But to me, it's a lot of the same responsibilities, it seems. I mean, you have to set the edge on the outside. And this is tough because, look, they pull their two interior offensive line where the linebackers are going to go. And then you have to have that 
the edge set on the outside. I mean, we see college teams do this all the time, but he's got to get out wide to force that play back inside. This read option pauses it, and he's able to get outside. You know, shotgun, pistol, you're going to see read option. Trey Lance has the ability to run, and so does the running back, of course. And then you could get some options out of that, possibly an RPO. You get a quick slant or something trying to beat this man coverage. So if he comes in, that will be the most interesting key to me is how the Lions adjust to that because that's something that they're planning for, and he's done it a few times. He did it against the Raiders. So it'll be interesting if they do that in this game. If they're struggling, I think they definitely will try to mix it up, but I think they will. And that's not to say a whole drive, but maybe inside of a drive. Put him out there just to throw off the Lions defense. So that, to me, will be an X factor. A couple players I would look out for in this game for the Lions defense is really everybody on the outside linebacker spot, whoever that is, what personnel they throw out there, because I think the linebacker Backers are going to be huge. They're going to get a lot of tackles and they're going to have to make a lot of plays. Defensive line, I think there's opportunity. If we can get them in passing downs, I think we can get pressure. I think right guard, left guard, right tackle are susceptible to giving up pressure. Maybe the other spots will, but those three spots in particular. And I know we got pass rushers that can take advantage. So if we can get into passing downs, we can get after this quarterback a little bit. And, you know, cornerbacks, stuff like that, they're going to have a chance to jump on routes. When some of those balls come out a little flat, they don't come out with a lot of velocity. I think we'll see the Lions focus on stopping the run. They're going to throw different looks at this offense, you know, zone, man, things like that. That. But I think a lot of these cover one looks, having a safety creep into the box, even if they start in a split safety look, is something that I would do a ton. My emphasis is stop the run. I mean, it really is tough. If we're in third and long, okay, I can split too deep, but my emphasis is stop the run. And anytime I get an extra guy near the box, I'm probably looking to do that. Even if it's post snap where he just shoots right down, that's fine. But I'm looking uh, for more protection against the run because make Garoppolo beat me. If Garoppolo want, feels comfortable with going out there and throwing it a ton because maybe their offense isn't up to where they want it to be with some of their run scheme, perfect. That's great. That's how I want this game to go. I'm going to trust my corners, my secondary versus their receivers and Jimmy Garoppolo. I think that's a great matchup and considering their our pass rush, I think we'll get some of that. Also look at Will Harris. Harris, I think is a guy that's going to be super involved from the safety spot. Coming down into the box, helping there. He may get some matchups with the tight ends, you know, George Kittle, things like that. So I would look for Will Harris. Walker as well, but really Will Harris. So outside linebackers, Will Harris, I would say are my players to watch. Who's ever an outside linebacker and Will Harris.